My name is Bill Lewis. I'm with Occupy Boston TV, and I have with me here today Deborah Butler Esquire, founder of Will Will Win Incorporated, a Massachusetts not-for-profit looking at legislative solutions to consumer issues. Welcome, Deborah. Hi. Thanks for having me, Bill. It's a great pleasure. So, what is it that you're trying to do with Will Will Win? Well, okay. We um, uh, I founded uh, the nonprofit. It's a 501c4 which makes it a social welfare organization in uh, 2010. And it is founded with the mission of identifying legislative solutions to consumer issues, as well as engaging consumers in the legislative process. That is a wonderful thing. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself as we start off here? Yes. Uh, I um, am a native from the, uh, in Massachusetts. I come from Framingham. And I... Um, studied at Boston University School of Law, uh, came out with my JD, and then I followed with a master's in tax law. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have since uh, returning to Massachusetts in 2007, really focused on consumer advocacy. Mm -hmm. And I founded the nonprofit through which to work uh, and advance some of the um, consumer advocacy issues that I feel very strongly about. Yes, indeed. So what kind of legislations have you identified so far that you wish to be looking at? Well, in 2010, in January to be specific, I uh, strongly felt that there should be a law to cap ATM fees. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was our first piece of legislation. And I traveled to Washington and I did talk to people on the Hill about uh, modifying a, uh, the National Bank Act to cap ATM fees. And uh, in the course of conversations with uh, my counterparts in Washington, I was told that uh, people don't get excited about small bank fees <laughs> and that I really should forget about a bill to cap ATM fees. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to give a disclaimer here. I was not the first person to ever think that there should be a law to cap ATM fees. Uh, that has been tried, but it, is, it has always failed in Congress. Uh, since then, we have focused as a, uh, as a nonprofit on another bill, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a bill that would force uh, nationally chartered banks, such as Bank of America, J.P. Ch uh, Morgan Chase, to abide by state interest rate caps on credit card loans. Yes, indeed. So I understand, and I was rather surprised by this, that a local bank is required to obey state regulations, but nationally chartered banks do not. That is, that is correct. Uh, it depends on where the charter is. Uh, mm -hmm. A state chartered here in Massachusetts bank uh, is, uh, must abide by what they call usury caps or interest rate caps on credit card loans. Massachusetts has an interest rate cap of 18%. Uh, now, a nationally chartered bank is chartered generally in South Dakota or Delaware, states that don't have interest rate caps. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, uh, they are able to charge any interest rate whatsoever. So they could charge like 30%? Uh, actually, but Bank of America does charge 30%. Uh, in Massachusetts, they piloted that interest rate in 2010. January 2010, and they did um, a first say that that would apply to people who have missed payments, uh, that their interest rate could go up to 30 percent. Uh, recently, I spoke to a gentleman who told me that his interest rate was 30 percent, 29.9 percent. But he said that his uh, interest rate was, um, he had not missed a payment. Uh, first Premier Bank is a nationally chartered bank. Uh, they do have uh, cl um, customers in Massachusetts, and they do pay 79.9% interest rate. 79.9% per annum. Correct. So in other words, if you move and forget about your credit card for a year, your balance is basically going to almost double. Uh, or triple or quadruple, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, that certainly seems like an egregious situation. And how are you trying to deal with this then? Well, um, as a graduate of Boston University, I had the uh, good fortune of actually accessing the legislative drafting clinic and the students within the clinic. Mm. 
Uh, we had three students over the course of the last uh, year uh, draft legislation for us as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, I became a registered lobbyist on Capitol Hill. I've made many visits to Washington. I stay on Capitol Hill. Uh, I talk to people in uh, offices um, targeting those who are strategically placed to get the legislation through. And um, the reason I became a registered lobbyist is because I was uh, galvanizing popular support for the bills in the efforts. Mm -hmm. And that is considered call to action. And as such, um, you must become a registered lobbyist or you could face a $50,000 fine for failing <laughs> to become a lobbyist. So I am a, right now, a uh, registered lobbyist who volunteers my time. <laughs> that is absolutely marvelous. So you're one of the lobbyists who don't make gobs and gobs of money. I make no money. <laughs> I understand that uh, you have been talking to uh, uh, Senator Scott Brown's staff recently. Yes, I uh, had a meeting um, in Scott Brown's office in uh, November mm -hmm. with his chief of staff. Uh, we talked about the bill, uh, which we call Votes from Home, a bill to restore states' rights to protect their citizens. It's kind mm -hmm. of a long name, but uh, every bill that we draft through the nonprofit, we um, preface with, uh, has a prefix of votes from home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a very interesting conversation with uh, the staff in his office and asked um, for his uh, co-sponsorship on the bill um, that, again, would force banks that uh, do business in Massachusetts, the larger banks, Bank of America, to abide mm -hmm. by our interest rate caps. Well, that is a wonderful thing. And how is it going so far? Well, so far, um, the bill um, was widely distributed. I did this myself uh, on Capitol Hill in November, uh, both on the House side and the Senate side. Uh, it does not have a sponsor. Mm -hmm. It must be introduced. Uh, sooner rather than later because the session is going to end in September. So the bill would have to become law by, uh, I'm sorry, by December. Um, but we're willing to, if we can get an, someone to introduce it on both the House and Senate side, um, mm -hmm. to see how, what type of popular support we can galvanize. Mm -hmm. um, considering the uh, fall the raw that followed Bank America's attempting to uh, establish high uh, fees at their ATMs, one would imagine that there is a lot of consumer interest in this. Yes, um, and there have been. I mean, in my own discussions, and I have, we have a very small board. Uh, we have four members of our board currently. Um, uh, when people hear that there's the prospect of getting a bill passed on a national level to um, cap our interest rates, um, uh, people say, yes, uh, where do I sign up? Who do I call? <laughs> so, uh, well, that's an impressive thing to be able to say. Yes, it is. It is. Okay, that is absolutely wonderful. Now, I believe you've uh, done some work related to voter suppression also. Yes. Um, again, our mission is to engage consumers in the legislative process. Mm -hmm. If we're asking people to contact Scott Brown's office, to use that as an example, to say, uh, Deborah's, we know Deborah uh, came to your office in November and talked to you about a bill or your staff about this particular bill. Mm -hmm. Will you support it? I want you to support it. Right. Um, if that individual is not registered to vote, um, then by all means, generally that's not a, pretty much of a wasted call. So we're, mm -hmm. we um, knew that to have an effective outreach with consumers, that each consumer had to be registered to vote. Yes, of course. And we started what um, is called the Voices to Votes um, Facebook fan page. Uh -huh. And we do tweet, and we ask people to uh, register, keep people updated on what's happening across the country with voter suppression laws. Mm -hmm. And we mobilized what we call um, Occupy Your Board of Elections. Ooh, Occupy your Board of Elections. Now, as a member of Occupy <laughs> Boston, anything that has Occupy in the mm -hmm. name, I am definitely in favor of. So what are you trying to do with Occupy your Board of Elections? Uh, Occupy board of, your Board of Elections, again, is a nationwide 
uh, event or effort. Mm -hmm. uh, we spearheaded it initially as a one-time event. It was scheduled for uh, January 17th. Mm -hmm. um, but because we had a late start in getting it off the ground and we were working through the holidays <laughs> and um, vacation schedules and all these types of things, um, it did not succeed to the level we felt it should. So we have now um, refashioned it and reformatted it, Occupy Your Board of Elections to a monthly event, mm -hmm. asking people no matter where they are in the country to go to their Board of Elections on the first Tuesday of every month. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their opportunity. We're not asking you to go every single month, yeah. but if you need to get registered to vote, mm -hmm. uh, that's the day to go to your board of elections or your town clerk's office, register to vote, bring someone who mm -hmm. needs to be registered to vote, or make sure that your forms are up to date. Mm -hmm. And while they're doing this, you, do you want them to do anything in particular which, which will uh, associate them associate themselves with the movement so, so that people know that, ah, this is another person who is concerned about voices to vote? Um, well, uh, our, this Occupy Your Board of Elections has not been uh, adopted by Occupy Boston, per se. Mm -hmm. uh, and when, when I say Occupy, it's in quotes. Yes. Um, Occupy, quote unquote, your Board of Elections. We're just hoping for a, an uptick of people who come to their Board of Elections directly mm -hmm. um, to register to vote. Uh, of course, there's always been third party registrants. So you can go to the mall or you can go to the grocery store and people will be sitting at tables asking you to register to vote and they'll process your registration form for you. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful. We applaud that. There's a, another um, effort planned for September 25th called National Voter Registration Day. Mm -hmm. um, but we feel as an organization that that's far too late into the uh, electoral process to galvanize popular support for people going to their board of elections. So we're just pushing this up, making it a monthly event. Um, what will come of it if we see long lines out of the um, uh, each uh, office or each board of elections would just mm -hmm. be notice. And, and media attention, perhaps, that uh, people who are going out in February and March at this point on the first Tuesday of each month to register to vote will certainly be um, present to vote on November 6th. Yes, indeed. Now, I've worked on a few campaigns, and I've been out there uh, registering voters, et cetera. It's, it's kind of fun. But I understand that there are some problems that uh, arise sometimes. For example, we would get a whole bunch of registration, and we, we would get them together, and we'd get them down to the uh, registrar office sometime later that week. But you were telling me that in Florida, there mm -hmm. is an issue surrounding this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, actually, unfortunately, there's many states that have seen a severe cutback on voter rights uh, via the uh, state legislatures. Um, Florida is one of them, unfortunately. In uh, Florida, in 2011, a bill was passed that um, allowed, that um, imposed a $1,000 fine on third-party registrants, uh, particularly the League of Women Voters. Um, mm -hmm. They were one of many third-party registrants, but um, they, if they did not process a registration form within 48 hours, uh, they were subject to a fine of $1,000. Or if they made an, uh, a mistake on a form that they could be fined $1,000. This was so chilling that the League of Women Voters stopped registering people in Florida uh, in May of 2011. They stopped registering people entirely. Yes, yes. Because, because the of danger the of making a mistake would be so costly because it would be so costly. They have joined in the, leg in the litigation, um, but they have stopped. When I learned that, and it was very mm -hmm. late that I learned that, it was actually the impetus for Occupy Your Board of Elections. Because we, I just said, well, if 
the problem is getting a registration form to the um, Board of Elections. We need people to go directly to the Board of Elections. I see the connection, certainly. So that is where that came from. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's truly a wonderful thing. Are there, and there are other states that have similar type of uh, egregious laws making it very difficult for, I mean, did this Democratic parties, Republicans parties, independent parties, um, I was in the Boy Scouts mm -hmm. and I worked with the uh, uh, <clears throat> League of Women Voters once upon a time back in the 1930s. <clears throat> <laughs> yes. And so all of these would be subject to a fine of $1,000 per registrant. Yes. Wow. That could get really expensive. Uh, I'm a member of the League of Women Voters, the Boston chapter. Um, and uh, other states that have uh, very onerous laws include Texas uh, with voter identification issues and their laws. Um, there's uh, Ohio. Uh, in Ohio, the, um, the law that w was to go into effect in September 2011, but for a, um, a petition signed by over 300,000 people, would have cut early voter early voting from 45 days, or I think 35 days to two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, it's estimated, and this comes, this statistic comes from the Brennan Center in New York, uh, at NYU, that mm -hmm. um, of the states, the six or so states that have cut back on voter uh, voter um, um, election rights, uh, have. Sp uh, include 171 electoral votes of the 270 needed. So that's 63 percent of the electoral votes come from states that have cut back on voter rights. Wow, that that sounds pr pr pretty pretty horrible. And I, I'm taking wild guess that because of this, do we see drops in registration then in these states? Um, certainly, you're you're seeing votes. I mean, registrations drop. Um, it's estimated to really affect uh, five million people will be disenfranchised um, because of what's happening with the state laws in uh, respect to voter rights. Five million voters five million. disenfranchised. And of that, it's really the seniors, uh, students, and, um, and low-income people. Mm -hmm. Whether it's forcing them to get uh, state-issued IDs, um, or uh, there's souls to the polls. Um, in Ohio right now, um, um, a lot of churches, particularly Baptist churches, would have gone to the an early voting period, take uh, their members from the church directly to the Board of Elections on Sunday, right after church. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the aspects of the law in Ohio was to eliminate Sunday voting. I see. So. Wow, that does make it uh, seem pretty bad. I mean, here we are in a state where we're trying to increase the uh, number of people involved in the uh, voting process, and yet so many states are working hard to prevent that. Right, right. Um, let me take a moment here. I Please. feel that um, it was important to take action. A lot of people, a lot of organizations talk about voter suppression raise money for voter suppression, but I wanted action. And I felt in our small way, we are a very tiny, new, young mm -hmm. effort, a nonprofit. But it, through the um, success of a Occupy Your Board of Elections, can we galvanize excitement over getting registered, making sure your registration form is up to date, and the importance of getting to the getting to the polls on the 6th of November. That I understand entirely. And of course, uh, all sorts of things have happened to uh, make it more difficult for people of certain groups to get to uh, their polling places, et cetera. Yes. <clears throat> and um, do you have an online presence? Yes, we um, have uh, a Facebook fan page, and that's at Facebook.com forward mm -hmm. slash Voices to Votes. And that's the number two. So, so voices. it's Voices number two votes. We also tweet, so you can find us at, at Voices to Votes. Mm -hmm. 
So, yes. And I notice you have a bright yellow button that says <laughs> D V G. Yes. What could that possibly stand for? Well, this comes from in 2010 when the kind of brainchild or the epiphany came to me to have um, Will Will Win. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that there should be a movement of people outraged about bank fees. Mm -hmm. And I called it the David versus Goliath movement. Ah. <laughs> So in short order, um, a very good friend of mine produced uh, some buttons for us, mm -hmm. and uh, they are distributed. And uh, we our, our movement didn't get off the ground, but um, uh, Occupy certainly came. <laughs> and when Occupy, um, many, I mean, it wasn't the only reason Occupy came to be, of course, but um, the, the outrage over the $5 debit card fee was uh, very timely for us. So mm -hmm. um, uh, we certainly um, felt that uh, if we could gather that strength, that momentum behind um, some of our pieces of legislation, particularly interest rate caps, mm -hmm. ATM fees, it would be a win-win. <laughs> it would definitely be a win-win. And so uh, obviously many members of Occupy Boston are, are, are very interested in this. Have you worked with other organizations also? Um, sure, we work with um, United States Student Association. Now, I'm not—they are not endorsing organizations with us, um, but um, we uh, NAACP, uh, the National People's Action in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, we have worked with the League of Women Voters. Uh, it's really this is a word of mouth campaign. Mm -hmm. So what we would we envision is that the organizations that have broad memberships, AFL, CIO, Occupy, all Occupy uh, <laughs> groups, uh, will will help us bring people to um, get them registered to vote. Those who mm -hmm. wish to be uh, of registered. Uh, that is absolutely wonderful. And what impresses me is that once again here you are an individual. And you've been inspired to go out and do something to make your country a better place. Well, thank you. I, 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 I'll accept that. <laughs> I, I agree. One person can make a difference. But um, I do also have a board. And we have many um, people who believe in our movement and have helped financially or helped, you know, again, with the word of mouth, mm -hmm. getting, um, getting uh, word out from what we're doing. Yes, indeed. Well, certainly being here, we'll get a little bit more word out. Now, that certainly can't hurt. Are there other things that you're doing to encourage people to get the word out? Do you have materials that they can see well, when they go on to the Facebook page, Voices to Vote? What will see, they see there? Um, there they'll see a, um, uh, actually, vo uh, Votes from Home, which is, you can find that if you go to Voices to Votes and the, the fan page, they're all connected mm -hmm. um, outreach. Uh, under the Votes from uh, Home fan page, the, I'm, I track what all my activity on Capitol Hill when I'm down mm -hmm. there and I'm making office visits and I'm meeting with individuals uh, on the Hill. Uh, Voices to Votes uh, covers uh, voter suppression, what's happening in various states, um, what's happening with um, um, litigation um, mm -hmm. in um, various forms to, to restore our rights to vote. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once again, this is the lit lit um, litigation you were just talking about. For example, I think you said in Florida and some of the other states, a litigation against these draconian laws which, which uh, put such high <clears throat> uh, fees. fines and fees mm -hmm. on what are really small mistakes. Yes, exactly. Um, the ACLU, I know, is one um, a member of that uh, litigation as well as the League of Women Voters in mm -hmm. Florida, yes. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely fascinating. I had the opportunity to go down to D.C. for the first time uh, last month mm -hmm. as part of the Occupy D.C. Mm -hmm. with uh, Occupy Boston. I was very impressed with uh, the ability to get that you can actually go into the offices and talk to your representatives if you're lucky enough that they're actually in their offices. Right. Well, w when I um, lobby on the Hill, mm -hmm. I um, 
I don't generally speak to the representatives. Mm -hmm. I speak to what they call LAs, LCs, legislative assistants, legislative uh, uh, council. Um, but these generally, these individuals um, are um, tasked with um, uh, finance, banking issues. They mm -hmm. have a certain expertise, depending mm -hmm. on if they're in the House or Senate. And uh, of course, they liaison back with their, with the representative, uh, with the message, with a copy of the bill. Mm -hmm. um, so I am I'm working very closely now on in the Senate side with um, Senator Kaka's people. Uh, he's on the Finance Committee. Uh, Hopefully, he'll mm -hmm. be the one that will introduce the bill on the Senate side. And if we're very lucky and we can get a lot of his constituents to call him, I hope Barney Frank will introduce the bill in the House side. That would be a wonderful thing. I would think that that would be a wonderful thing for Barney Frank as he's moving out of politics mm -hmm. and into private life to be able to leave behind a piece of legislation such as that. Mm -hmm. It would be. It really would. Um, I just thought of something that uh, you asked earlier. If people um, go to our Facebook page, uh, mm -hmm. again, facebook.com forward slash voices to votes, um, and like the page, there's, that makes a big difference when I have discussions with um, Scott Brown or John Kerry or um, Spencer Bacchus is, uh, Spencer Bacchus is on the House side to mm -hmm. say, this is a following of people who have embraced um, either um, you know, a bill to cap ATM fees or a bill to um, cap interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, when we have 10 people who like a page or you have 20,000, that makes a difference. So that's what I'm really hoping is people will, will simply like um, I see, the page. so the mere fact of my going to Facebook voices to votes mm -hmm. and simply clicking like, oh, this is a good idea, I like this. Yeah. That will register for you and you'll be able to say, uh, this many people right. are concerned about this issue and therefore you, Mr. or Ms. Legislature Slater, you should be uh, concerned about it also. Exactly. You nailed it. That's and so it. they pay attention to people who are voting. <laughs> Well, you know, the phenomena of blogging and social media has an impact on the health. Well, it Deborah, really does. it has been a great pleasure to talk to you. I think that what you're doing is absolutely wonderful and fascinating. I have enormous respect, and I'm so happy to have you here today. Thank you very, well, very much. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. It's bye -bye. been a great pleasure.